Hi folks, thanks for joining us. My name is Dr. Ivan Joseph and I'm the Vice President of Student Affairs here at Wilfrid Laurier University. I wanna begin first by acknowledging that Wilfrid Laurier's campuses are situated on the Holloman Track, on the traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee peoples. Today, this land is home to many First Nation, Métis and Indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island. Acknowledging them reminds us of our important connection to the land. We recognize, honor, and respect these nations as the traditional stewards of the lands and water on which Laurier is now present. Welcome to the Student Parent Town Hall. This is an exciting time for Laurier as we welcome new and current students back to our campuses in Brantford and Waterloo. I wanna begin by kind of introducing our student affairs team. We're here to be a part of a discussion, a Q and A session, to help you return to in-person activities. I'm joined by my team, as well as the student union president. I'll ask them to turn on their um, screens as we begin. First, uh, Kate McCray Bristol, our Dean of Students from the Waterloo campus. I don't know if she's there, but give us a, give us a wave when you're there. Sarah. Hi, everyone. Ah, good, thank you. Sarah Broderick, Manager of Recreation and Facilities. She there? Chris Dodd, Director of Residence. Hi, thanks for having me. All right, PJ or Pega Jemiloff, your student university president, Wilfred Laurier. Hello, hi, thank you. And of course, Lindsay Lawrence, our manager, Transition and Learning Services. Hi, everyone. All right. Oh, I'm sorry, I've got a little bit of a technical difficulty. Hold on, oh, that took care of that. Notice my light just blew. So welcome to the virtual world. There's always something that happens. So as you can see, <laughs> things don't always go as we plan, but we always adjust. You know, there's a few housekeeping items I wanna remind you of before we begin today. First of all, please note that this meeting will be recorded so that everybody can go back and take a look at it again after you've taken a look, all right, after you've been as part of this session. To respect everyone's privacies, audio and video is activated only for featured speakers. Closed captioning is available. To activate this feature, please click on the CC bot button on the bottom of your Zoom screen and that will help this. We'll be opening up for live questions. You can submit yours through the Q&A function. That's that Q&A function right at the little bottom of your button. I and my team will do our best to answer as many of these questions as possible live. I know last time we did a town hall, I think there was 250 questions. We may not get to them all live, but if we if not, we'll be make sure we'll make sure we post them to our frequently asked questions. Or if you send us an email with a link, we'll make sure we can get back to you personally. We know that there's lots of questions and we want to be as helpful as we can. All right. Finally, I know that many questions about the university experience, the academic experience, what's happening in the classroom. My roles in my portfolio is anything outside of the classroom. And so while I won't be able to answer those um, specifically, you need to turn those to the, the specific faculties or deans. That's where that expertise is. But I'll be happy to make sure that if you have something specific, we will also try and turn that to the right and appropriate people. And again, if you have any questions that are within the student affairs portfolio, if we don't have the answer, we'll do our best to get it to you. All right. There's a lot going on right now. You know, when the pandemic started 18 months ago, nobody thought we'd be here in another fall doing this again. These are the things that happen. I have three kids myself who are in university. And I will tell you, um, it's, been, it's been start, stop, shift, left. Everybody needs to be nimble. Where we are right now today is not where we thought we would be two weeks ago. And having said that, in another two weeks, we're not sure we, where we will be again. But we always continue to say, let's try to do the best we can. And the best we can means paying attention to public health, paying attention to the health and safety and well being of our students, our staff, and our faculty, and trying to deliver the experience that you are, that you are choosing Laurier for a place that builds connections, a place that builds community, a place that delivers a first class academic experience. You don't need a long speech for me. I'm going to be your moderator and facilitator. The most important thing is here is how can we get you the questions, um, get your questions answered that you may need. If there's a technical difficulty, if somebody is, you know, I, I'll say, um, you know, kicked out, just jump back in. 
Um, as you notice, I just had a light blow, blue blow. So those things happen. Um, we'll just go with it. I ask that we be respectful and we be civil and we be kind to one another during this conversation. We're together for the next hour. Let's see what we can. So I see the first one is from uh, Brianna Davis here. What will the protocols be for returning to in-person learning in the winter term? What will happen with the students who remain unvaccinated for COVID-19 uh, virus? And it's different strains. Oh, Brianna, I see you put two questions in. So I'll start with that, right? You know, we're all planning. This is a, a transition semester. And so we're hopeful that in second semester in January, that things will be better. Things will be opened up that, you know, we'll continue to roll where we are with the vaccination process, that more of our community will continue to be vaccinated. And we will be doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing, which is staying safe and if that's the case and public health has moved us into phase four or whatever phase that might be, we're gonna say, excellent. We are planning to move and, and be ready to roll. We were hopeful that we would have been in stage four already, but we're not, we are paused in stage three. And so what that means is um, public health will really be the ones that dictate whether we're back in person and the social distancing rules and the masking policies and all of those things are off. Today you saw, you may have seen that we announced that, hey, if you are unvaccinated, all right, we're gonna give you till a certain date, October 8th, to get vaccinated. Up until October 8th, if you wanna come on campus, you will have to get tested. But after October 8th, right, and you're, if you're not vaccinated, you will not be allowed on campus, whether you're a faculty, a staff, or a student. And so what that means is that we want to encourage you all to get vaccinated. Well, how will we make sure people are complying? What's gonna be done with them? Well, we're working that out right now. And while we, don't, we haven't landed on what that process or that protocol is, it could range from anything from the student code of conduct being enacted, because those are the processes and you'll go through and, and you'll go through the, the, um, the, the non-academic student code of conduct, or it could be something as, and not saying that we've done this, but it could be the conversation might where we land is, you know what, we've told you what we need from you to be a part of our community, which is to be vaccinated before you enrolled, students chose not to enroll. And perhaps we say, okay, we might de-enroll students and give you your money back and say, perhaps Laurier is not the place for you. Um, but again, that announcement just came out today and we're working out through those processes. As soon as we have more of those, we'll let you know. Um, Steve, I see a question for you. What type of washer and dryers are in the residence and do we buy tabs or liquid? Very detailed question. I'm gonna pass that over to the director of residence to handle that. Um, I'm not sure uh, what type we have, but everybody uses tabs and liquid. So either is totally fine. There uh -huh. are, most of them are top loaders are, are, you know, really regular standard machines that, um, that will get all of your stains out, I'm sure. So tabs or liquid is fine. Thank you. You know, we've had a lot of people ask, is first semester fully online? And no, it's what we call a flex or a hybrid model. We've tried our best to take a look at the uh, pedagogy, what curriculum needs, what classes, what labs need to be delivered in person. If you're a music person, you have to be here. What tutorials, what labs, what small group settings can we have and can we deliver in person? We're doing our best as an academic to deliver those. Um, but some classes are online. Um, hopefully everybody has at least one um, certain piece of their academic experience will be face to face. Um, that's an important question. Um, and hopefully as we move forward in second semester, we'll be all going through that together where we'll be back together face to face. Um, to uh, what size are the residence beds? Are they a twin? I guess to the director of residence, Heather, this is, question is for you, um, Chris. Um, there's singles, uh, twin bed would be the way I would describe it. Twin bed sheets will fit on 97% of our, um, residence beds. Okay, perfect. All right, Lorand, I see your question. How do we state our vaccination status to the university? Okay. I think Kristen, are you going to answer that one? Um, live? Okay. Nope. Well, what you're going to be doing um, with your vaccination status is there's um, you're going to get this uh, what's called a safe app that you'll download on your phone. And when you download that app on your phone, there's a COVID badge that you'll get. You can take a picture of your vaccination status, your first date, your second date, you get a report, you download on the app and you'll get a COVID badge, which is basically um, a green badge that says you're good to go. 
and that will say and state your vaccination status. All right. Did I get that right? I want to turn that over to. Um, I can jump in Satan here, Craig. Ivan. Yes. Yeah. Um, today, students would have received the email that outlines the expectations and the coming communications around submitting their paperwork. Um, it'll be all done through their, the Safe Hawk app. Um, which current students will know about and new students can download now with using their Laurier credentials. More information is coming, but the important part is that students, current and incoming students, check their Laurier email address and check their junk mail because some messages we've switched email um, providers and some students are missing the email. It went out today, so the information should be in their Laurier, my Laurier inbox. Um, with instructions on how to download the app, how to get a copy of their vaccination records, and the communication around what to do for any um, necessary exemptions. Yeah, thank you for that. You know, I see one here, and, I, and I've been getting a lot of these ones from parents, and I know Kristen is typing an answer live to you, Wendy, but I just want to make sure I'm going to turn this to everybody as well. Why has Laurier chosen not to have in-person classes this fall, like so many other Ontario universities, such as U of T, Western, et cetera? I think we're all on the same page, is that everybody would prefer to have in-person classes. And while Laurier, you know, the myth is that we're not having any, we're just we're having, I, I think the goal was to have 25% or so. And so that's where we're at. I know everybody says Western is having all their classes face to face. I will tell you this as, a, as from a firsthand story, whatever, whoever is saying that story, my son goes to Western in engineering and he chose to transfer because he did not want to have an online experience again at Western. He's going out to school out east in Nova Scotia. And so I know everybody's comparing every university against every university. Um, you know, we're all trying to do the best we can while keeping everybody safe and adhering to the public health guidelines that says how many people we can have in a, in a classroom and how we can best deliver our, our, um, our studies that keeps our faculty, our students, and our staff safe. Um, Noor, I see you have a question. What if I'm vaccinated with, I'm going to say this wrong, Sinoform vaccine? Is it acceptable in Canada? I can't speak to the Sinoform vaccine. I think Kristen is gonna take that answer, but what we can say is if your vaccine is approved by the World Health Organization, um, it will be acceptable in Canada. All right. Emily, um, for fall in-person classes, will classrooms, desks specifically be sanitized after every class? Um, does anybody wanna take tackle that one? I'm always, I'm doing all the talking, so I'm happy to jump in on that one if, if nobody else wants to, to tackle that. I'll, I'm, I'm there then. Yes, there will be cleaning in between every, um, um, there's extended cleaning that's happening on our campus. There's also increased ventilation that the university is invested in. We take the health and the safety seriously between, um, uh, across our campus, and we've all enhanced our cleaning as well as our ventilation. Jose, I see you. Uh, Coin operated, yes, they're coin operated. Well, Kristen will get to you on that one. When and where do we pick up our OKIT for orientation week? PJ, our student union leader, I will, I will turn that to you. Hi, sorry, I'm just having a hard time finding that question, but I think Jason or Tony, who are here with me, might be able to answer better. Okay. Yep. Sure, I can do that. For the Waterloo campus, uh, you'll be able to pick up your old kits on the move-in days. So Saturday, September 4th, Sunday, September 5th, and Monday, September 6th, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the quad. So right in front of the Fred Nicholas Campus Center. If it happens to be raining, we'll move indoors into the concourse, which is just inside the FNCC. And if you're speaking for the Brantford campus, their old kit pickups will be September 6th, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, in the research academic courtyard. Thank you. Um, Sheetal, I'm, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I'm gonna turn your question over to Lindsay Lawrence and it's how do we get access to the information shared during the Helping Your Hawk Soar, part one and two series, which, which we were not able to attend. Lindsay? Thank you, that's a great question. Uh, all of our summer webinar series 
uh, events are recorded and are posted on the Laurier 101 events page. So the Helping Your Hawk Soar series for parents and supporters that have questions about how to support their students during the first year, head over to the Laurier 101 events page. I believe Kara is going to pop it in the chat there if you want to grab the link for it before we finish here today. Uh, and you can also view some of the other webinars that we hosted that are more student focused. Um, and find any information that you need. If you have trouble accessing it, laurie101 at wlu.ca, we're happy to send it out for you as well. Thank you very much. And um, Sarah Broderick, there's a question from Kyle Smith here for you. What's the current capacity for the weight room? You're muted, Sarah, just so you know. You owe us a dollar for that. I do, I owe another dollar. You would think after all this time it'd be better, but I was just saying a great question and like everything else during COVID, it is continuously evolving and we are expecting some changes in the coming couple of weeks. As of today, it's 80 people at a time um, with one hour booking slots. Uh, lots of students are savvy and using their capacity to be able to book two in a row so they can get their full extended work it out, workout in, do their cardio and their weights uh, back to back sessions. But uh, 80 people right now, we are in anticipating an increase before September. We're still trying to figure out exactly what that will look like, but at least 80 and, and probably more. Thank you for that. Um, Chris Dodd, get warmed up. Jasmine Kent is coming your direction with a question. For dorm style residents, what um, is provided in the common areas and kitchenette? Um, of the apartment and suite style um, accommodation, it's just a fridge and stove, um, any pots and pans or knives and forks or plates or even a microwave you have to uh, procure and bring uh, for yourself. So just the, just the sort of necessities are there. Anything else, um, we, we ask you to bring those things. Okay, thank you. Iman, um, I'm not sure of the answer to your question in the Zoom platform used for all remote cor courses and for online courses. You know, um, we can get that answer to you, but I'm going to say as a former professor that each faculty member um, may choose different platforms to teach and engage in, especially when they're using some uh, small class labs and, and tutorials. But um, I will get, ask my colleague to just put something in the in the chat um, a link to the academic frequently asked questions so that we might be able to get that answer to you. Um, Chris, back to you, um, since you oversee the dining halls areas as well, what COVID precautions are being taken in the cafeterias and restaurants and other indoor eating areas? So I can speak for, uh, for dining on campus for sure. Um, it's, this, it's basically a partnership with public health and they have come in and given us our capacity. So the capacity of the dining hall is, is lowered. Um, students, um, there's masking rules around as you're collecting your food or ordering or those kind of things, once you sit down to eat, you can take your mask down. Um, so, um, and rigorous cleaning, obviously. It's much like when you go to a restaurant or something like that. Um, Ontario has made those rules clear around what dining looks like, and it's no different um, at the university. Thank you. You know, Bambi, I see a question about the October 8th vaccination apply to second dose or will the first dose be sufficient? And it applies to the second dose. You must be fully vaccinated by the October 8th deadline. All right. You know, I see some, Lindsay, can you speak to the academic preparation? Um, I see Wendy has a question here. And so um, can you speak to, you know, I see it's about you're nervous about your kids entering first year after this high school year with no exams and they're feeling worried about being prepared. Um, Lindsay Lawrence, can you handle that question? Absolutely, it's a good question. We know it's a popular topic right now for students, parents, and honestly, faculty members as well. So um, the good news is that it's top of mind for everyone. So we know that students have had a different high school experience. Uh, we've been working with faculty members to inform them about what that high school experience was so they know what their students are coming in with. Uh, we've put in a lot of um, preparation opportunities throughout the summer as well. So right now, our academic preparation certificate is live. Uh, you can access that from our Laurier 101 page. That gives you a great overview on what the university experience is going to be like, what are some of the 
traditional differences between high school and university style learning, but also how to prepare for online classes. Uh, there's information about managing your time. So how would you manage in person as well as online classes if that's what your schedule looks like. So there's a lot, a lot of different pieces in there. Uh, there's discussions happening right now with some of our uh, senior Laurier 101 hosts sharing their experiences. So if you haven't joined one of the Hawk Talks, I would encourage your students to do that. Hear from senior students what that last year experience was like for them as well. Um, and then make sure that during orientation week, you're taking part in our first year starter pack uh, sessions. There's two sessions on Tuesday, two on Wednesday, and our O-Week team is going to be sending out that schedule to you very shortly. Uh, and you can take a look at that. And again, that's where we're talking about how do you prepare? What are some of the things that you can start doing in those classes to make sure that you are up to speed? But the most important thing to remember is that we know this has been a different experience for you for the last year. We also know that starting your university experience in a hybrid or a transition model is also not normal. So we are taking that into consideration. Uh, all of our academic supports are available for you. There will be virtual opportunities to connect with a learning strategist. You can connect with your academic advisor if you have questions about changing your schedule. Uh, so really the, the biggest message is if, if something's not feeling right, then just talk to someone about it. Reach out to your professor as a starting point. Reach out to one of our first year academic coaches who will be connecting with you through your residence communities, through your locus communities. Um, and just remember that there really are a lot of supports and, and we're here for you. And I think that's hopefully one of the messages that you get from tonight is that Laurier really is a supportive community and, and we know that this is a different type of year and, and we're ready for you. So um, just take advantage of everything that is here uh, and start with the academic prep certificate because you can start that tomorrow. Thank you. Very thorough answer. Chris Dodd, get warmed up, our Director of Residence Life. We've got um, four questions coming from Lori, Julie, Bambi, and Akshan. All right. What are the kitchens in the apartment style units equipped with? Well, when you arrive, there will be a fridge and a stove and a sink. That's what it's equipped with. Everything else you need to bring. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a very simple answer. Bring the things you need or want. Julie, I think that pretty much takes care of your question too. You uh, raid your mom or dad, grandma, auntie, uncle's kitchen for pots, pans, towels, dish soap, everything you need. Is it possible to arrange a twin extra large bed in residence? Bambi wants to sleep in comfort. Well, <laughs> we asked on the residence application for your height. So if you're over a certain height, you will have been assigned to a bed that is long enough for you. If you get there and you find that you are not in a bed that's long enough for you, let us know and we will make sure we, uh, we switch some things around for you. Thank you. Akshan wants to know if there's filtered water available in the dorms. Filtered by the city of Waterloo. <laughs> Thank you. I yeah. didn't want to say anything. I thought maybe the Ritz was coming to Laurier. Yeah. No, but... just the water, just the Waterloo water, which is awesome. I drink it all the time. All right. Or bring your good water bottle that has the filter in it. Noor has a question. If I want to join in winter term, is law and society included with programs that are starting in winter term? Again, it's an academic question, Noor. I'm not sure if I can answer that correctly. I'll ask my colleagues to post something in the chat and direct you to where you might be able to get that um, answer. Are fully online students exempt from this, from this vaccination uh, passport? If, you not, if you're not coming on campus, you don't need to get vaccinated for Laurier to attend Laurier, right? Um, but if you are coming on campus in any shape or form for intramurals, for a club participation, to meet with your study group, um, you will need um, to show your proof of vaccination, okay? Are all communications with professors I, I Simon's Digital or will there be a need for a printer and dorm? Again, um, Matt, I can't answer that question because every faculty member, every professor will be specific and do the things um, the way they want them to be done. I ask that you'll check in with your syllabus um, on that first day and typically the faculty members will tell you what their expectations are, all right? Uh, back to you, Chris Dodd, two more questions on residences. How do we pay for laundry in Brantford campuses? And what's the guest policy for residences? Um, the laundry uh, is built into your cost, except for one of our buildings where the laundry is a little swankier and it's, um, it's a card system. Uh, but mostly, uh, most of our students um, have paid for their laundry. Um, there's a few buildings where we didn't build it in, um, but most of them are, are free at this point. 
Um, the guest policy is very simple, no guests. Um, the region has been very clear with us in terms of letting people into the buildings, only residents into the buildings. Um, and you can um, go into people's rooms who are on your floor only, um, no wandering around the building. We're trying to keep people in the cohorts. And I know that's a word that everybody understands these days. Um, so the guest policy uh, is pretty simple for September. Now, it doesn't mean if things get better, we won't change it. But at this point, that's what it is. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Brianna, you have a question here. Wouldn't forced vaccines be a violation of human rights if you cannot be vaccinated for whatever reason? What options will be available to these students? And so, you know, taking aside the philosophical piece, Laurier has taken a stance and following the science that vaccinations are the way um, we want to go under the recommendation and the guidance of public health. However, there are certain people or certain cases where you can choose not to get vaccinated if you are in a protected group as by the Human Rights Charter. Uh, Charter. You can apply, there's a form, we'll make sure that there's a link to what that process looks like. You can apply and fill out that form if you fall under one of those protected groups to have your rights maintained. Will there be physical distancing be maintained during the lab sessions, which are in-person classes? Absolutely, we, we are limiting the capacity of certain um, places right now. Again, that might change. We don't know what public health or the ministry and how that might roll out. But right now, every, every space that we have on campus is not all operating at full capacity. There's certain numbers that we can, can put in those places. All right. Now, um, I want to make sure I answer this question clearly because that's on the academic side of the house. Um, but those are the policies right now. Who knows if that will change? Mathene, a first-year parent, how will the on-residence experience be compared to pre-COVID experiences? Chris. Um, well, that's a, that's a really good question. I think we do um, about as well as possible. We deliver all of our programs um, that we delivered pre-COVID. Pre um, uh, some of them are online. This year, it's gonna be a little bit easier because floors can gather um, in certain ways. Uh, so we will try to deliver as much as we can in person. Um, the big difference is moving around the building and having guests come and go. Um, the programming is virtually identical. The exact same programs are being delivered. Um, so, I mean, other than the guest part, I think we're, we're doing pretty well delivering um, the residence life and the transition stuff um, as much as we can. And I think it's very comparable to what we would have delivered in 2019. Thank you. Lori, this is for you. In the Helping Your Hawk SOAR event, Lindsay, this is for you, right? They mentioned emails being sent out with details regarding meal plans, but we haven't received anything yet. Have these been sent out yet? Is this really Lindsay or is this a Chris Dodd one? I think it might be better for Chris, but uh, if there's any information that you're missing, you can always email the Lori 101, but uh, usually meal plan goes out with residents, I believe. So what was specifically meal plan? I'm not, I didn't sort of, I, I didn't totally get the question. Um, when will meal plans um, notices being given? And there's another one about meal plans also is, um, when will the cafeteria be open for those students who have purchased a five-day meal plan? So it'll be open on Sunday of Labor Day. It'll open for breakfast and then it's open. And then you're, it's open till people go home for the holidays in December. Okay. Um, so uh, what was, was, I didn't really get this, the other, was there another part to that question? I, I forget it. Lindsay, do you remember it? I think they were just looking for when are they going to find out information about the meal plan? So part well, of it might um, have been when it's opening, but I believe just with the residents information. Right. So all of the meal plan information is on the one card website. So um, and if you if you have any questions, you can email one card at WLU.ca. The one card office administers the meal plan at Laurier and they have all of the information on there. Anything you'll need to know. If you have a specific question, email them. They'll get right back to you. All right. Thanks, Liz, for posting that question. In the Helping Your Hawk SOAR event, they mentioned emails being sent out with details regarding meal plans. We haven't received anything yet. So if they haven't received a meal, um, an email, um, going back to, um, to Kate McRae's answer, making sure you've, you're getting the right email set up, you're, you're, you've made sure you've checked your cash and your junk email as well, because sometimes those things move into the, um, in a different space. Chris, can you also elaborate while we have you on the date and time of residence hall move-in? Yeah, so it's uh, it's three days. It's 
uh, over the Labor Day weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, and it is from nine in the morning till five in the afternoon, you should have received a, um, an appointment, a time to come and move into your building. Um, it's one hour time slots and you have two hours to move in. Um, and then we will ask those who came to help you to, uh, to move along so we can get some more people in. Uh, but it's three full days of move in um, through all of our buildings. And you're letting, are you letting one parent, two parent, parent, two auntie, parents grandma, or two, cousin? What we're saying is two helpers mm -hmm. um, and they will have to pass the screening to be able to get in the building. Just like the students will, we'll ask the screening questions, the same ones you get asked whenever you go out or wherever you go, we will ask you those questions. And if you can, as long as you can pass the screening, you and your two helpers will be able to move into your building. Thank you. Sarah Broderick. Just one sorry, one oh, more thing ahead. about that. Um, we, we sent out an email for all students, all resident students to um, confirm their vaccination status. If we have not received your response to that, by the time you move in, we will not allow you to move in. You can't get your keys until you have confirmed your vaccination status with the Department of Residence. If you haven't received that email, do as Kate says and check your junk and look around. And if not, please contact us at housing at wlu.ca and we'll make sure um, to take care of you. Thanks, Chris. Sarah Broderick, this question's for you from Brett. Where yeah, do you if you visit the uh, Laurier Athletics, I read it there, Ivan, I jumped in on you, but um, to book a gym time, a, a spot actually, uh, you can go to the reservation system at laurierathletics.com. You can click to sign in, you can create an account there. Um, and we recommend that you use your My Laurier and your uh, attach your WLU ID number when you create your account. Then you can sign in and reserve a spot in a fitness center, um, group exercise classes for a lane swim, any of the uh, programs that are requiring a reservation at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Kate, this question is for you. Um, what will be the major differences for students who can't make it to the Laurier campus, either Waterloo campus or the Brantford campus this fall? What will be the major difference? Well, the good news is we've made a very strong commitment across campus in student affairs to continue to offer opportunities for students to get engaged, whether it's uh, seeking academic help through Lindsay Lawrence and her team through athletics programming and fitness classes, group exercise, some of our more um, social meet and greet opportunities for students to be both in person and virtual. Not every event will be both at the same time, but there will be a you know, a wide variety of opportunities for students to remain engaged, even if they're not physically on campus or in Waterloo. Many, many of our programs over the last year saw a great uptake in participation while students weren't on campus. And so we're committed to maintain a lot of those opportunities. So while it will certainly feel a bit different if you're not on campus, there are still plenty of ways to stay engaged. And it's probably a good time to also offer a good plug for particularly our incoming students who are not living in residence, but are either living off campus, but including at home, to become engaged with our LOCUS program. It's our Laurier Off-Campus University Student Program. And it's a great way to, um, dare I say, mirror some of the residence experience off campus, a chance to create um, a community and connect with other incoming students who are living off campus and engage in great opportunities for skill development and social um, opportunities. So if you um, are off campus and you are first year, I would strongly encourage you to tap into what's happening at Locus and that will keep you sort of one foot at Laurier and, and one foot wherever you are remotely. Thanks. And Alicia, I hope that answers your question. And Kara, if you could put a link to that shows that um, how to get to that um, locus information on our student affairs webpage, that would be great. Um, some more questions about O week. So um, PJ and student union, we'll turn this to you. This is coming from Yara. Um, will the dining ha um, hall be open during um, orientation week? Um, well, I guess that might be Chris Dodd more than you. Oh, yeah. Just orientation week. Sorry, PJ, false alarm. Uh, that's a quick one, it's open. <laughs> All right, nice and simple, right? Uh, we're still getting some um, questions about the um, what's provided in the common room in the semi-suites, the aisle residence, microwave, stove, question marks. Chris? 
again, no, uh, no. It, uh, yeah. Whatever you need, you bring. Um, right. Yeah. Joshua has a question for you as well. As an international first year student, be guaranteed a room of sorts in the residence halls. Since he submitted his application late, he's waiting for his results to confirm his status here at Laurier. If you turned in late, will you be guaranteed a spot in the residence halls? Unfortunately, no, um, but that doesn't mean um, you won't get one. Um, if, if, if you've accepted your offer and you are coming to campus, I would suggest you call the residence office tomorrow and see where we are on the waiting list. If you're on the waiting list, we are starting to get through some students on the waiting list, but call and see where you are and we can advise you as to when you might get in and what that might look like. Okay, thank you. Andrew, I see your question about the commitment made to students who did not get into the in-person BU 111 labs in the fall. And again, um, I, as I said at the beginning, I can't comment on the academic pieces. I will uh, ask you to address those questions to the faculty members and that staff in that department. Um, I, 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 I just can't, I just don't know the answers to that. Will the athletic facilities be open? Absolutely, they will be open. Chris, are there water stations in the dorms? Can students bring a water filter like a Brita? Sure, they, they absolutely can. Lots of people do bring a Brita. There aren't specific water stations. There's taps, uh, but lots of people do use a Brita for sure. And Sarah, I just want to turn back to you. When it says the, the um, athletic facilities will be open, what does that really mean? Yeah, um, we've been pretty fortunate in athletics, although we've had some reduced capacities. We currently have both the athletic complexes open where we have our 50 meter pool and the fitness center, as well as our gymnasium and our studio spaces. So we're operating at reduced capacities, but have um, the fitness center open, lane swims happening and our running group exercise and dance classes. And by early the second week of September, we'll also have some drop-in times in the gymnasium uh, going and end of September, um, we will be starting our intramural programs back up. So obviously with new safety restrictions and some limitations, but most of our regular intramural programs will be back in action. Okay, thank you. And now PJ, I finally have an orientation question for you. How much of O week will be in person? Right. So. I can speak to, we do have some events planned for the outdoors, but um, Jason and Tony who are really planning those events might be able to speak a bit better to it. I know that they did answer a question in the chat, but if they can also answer it live. Uh, sure, I can speak to the Waterloo campus and then Tony, if you wanna quickly speak to the Brantford campus. So uh, we have a hybrid orientation week this year, which means some of our events are virtual uh, some of our events are in person. Some of our in-person events are also live stream out. Uh, so on the Waterloo campus specifically, I would say that the majority of our programming is offered in person and uh, hybrid where you can watch it virtually. Um, we have social programming in the evenings, like a movie night, um, a headphone disco, a concert, those types of things. And then some keynote speakers uh, during the day. All of our of all of our in-person events are happening outdoors at the university stadium, so the football field. Um, so if everyone can pray for good weather, that would be super uh, helpful for all of us. Um, and if we end up having some inclement weather, then we'll, we'll move to a virtual option for those programs. Um, but there is quite a bit of stuff that we're planning to do in person this year on the Waterloo campus. And Tony, I'll let you speak to Brantford. Yeah, thanks, Jason. And very similarly in, on the Brantford campus, we're looking to do a hybrid delivery as well. Um, Again, praying for, for good fortunes with weather, with the majority of our in-person programming taking place outdoors in our research and academic center courtyard. So that'll be just uh, just outside of where the bookstore is located for those that have seen campus maps. Um, and then we have a few of our impact speakers in our opening ceremonies that are gonna be taking place in the Laurier Brantford YMCA gymnasium. So we're really excited to get uh, to welcome you first year students into that space as well. So we're also going to be doing a headphone disco, an outdoor movie night, as well as some video games nights and some general kind of uh, social congregating. So it'll be a lot of fun. Thank you. I see from Andiza, you've got a question is, um, how are the res rooms cleaned? Are they cleaned and sanitized by cleaning staff, the, the residence rooms and the common areas? I can, I'm going to take that as two separate areas. So in the dorm style buildings, the lounges and the hallways and the and the um, and the, the foyers and all that are clean and the bathrooms are cleaned by staff um, The in your room. Um, 
we have we were asked by the region to discontinue that and it was only a once a month kind of room mopping thing staff was uh uncomfortable in covid going into students rooms students were uncomfortable having staff come into their room so we do not mop uh room mop uh in the rooms in dorm anymore suite is very much the same the common areas the lounges and the and the hallways are all done daily um, inside the suite is the student's responsibility thank you and sit tight chris we've got two more coming your way you're a popular guy this evening the water in waterloo is, is very hard and harsh okay our, and i know it because i got the well too are the shower heads detachable in the dormitories no they're just okay. regular everyday shower heads all right and from Louise, she wants to know is, can you please walk her through the meal plans, the actual differences of the five day apartment style versus the dormitory style? OK, so I'll try and do it as quickly as I can. The apartment style is a smaller meal plan and can be used um, in much uh, in much different areas of the university. Um, and it's very flexible. You can use it in the dining hall or you can use it in in the terrace or you can use it at Starbucks or Tim Hortons or all those places. Um, the, the dorm style meal plans, there's a five day and a seven day and they are what's called a board plan. So you can go in there any anytime. If you have seven day, anytime, any day or night, you can go, well, when it's open, you can go in there and swipe your card and eat or drink whatever you would like. And the five versus seven days is obvious. Seven days is seven days a week. Five days is the five weekdays. Um, for, for really detailed information, if you go to the one card website, that's where you will get it. But I think that's basically the difference. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's best to go to the website to get the exact um, numbers and that kind of stuff, but that's a good overview. And if you look, Kara has put that link right there in your chat to help you out folks. So thank you. Thanks, Kara. I, I would always be a seven day a meal, um, meal guy, but that's okay. Uh, I'm a heavy eater. All right, Lindsay, it's for you. All right. Um, how do we get involved in the first year student leadership program? I'm assuming that's Lindsay or it might be Kate. Which one of you wants to take that one? We can, we can do it together. I can start if that works. Uh, um, and it's a great question. We love to see engaged students. So as a starting point, whether you're living in residence or locus through your residence or locus communities, there are a number of leadership opportunities and, and ways to get involved in sort of different aspects of residence and, and campus life. So start with the community that you've been assigned to. Uh, I think when we talked about locus before, uh, we put the link in there for you, but make sure that you go and do it. Every non-resident student, so any student living off campus has already been assigned to a locus community. So if you haven't received that information, then you need to go to that locus um, email address, let them know that you are looking for finding that community as well. So residents and locus are your starting point because the, the community and the structure for, for first year programs is already built into those programs. Uh, and then outside of residents and locus, our students union is really a, a go to place to find uh, clubs and services, opportunities and ways to get involved. And that starts with first year students. So I'm not going to talk about that for I don't know if PJ you want to talk about that or maybe Kate you want to talk about some of the other experiences. Um, but but lots of ways to get involved, whether you're on campus or off campus. Let's go to PJ first, then Kate. Yeah, I might just use a little promotion here. Um, we are always looking for first year students to be involved, and I will make sure that I will just put a link to um, our website in the chat here. Um, but there's so many different opportunities in the Get Involved Fair that will be happening during that O week time um, for our first year students to learn more. And then we also have opportunities for all our students from first year all the way through fourth year. So I will ensure to get that out there. So thank you. Kate, anything you want to add? Nope, I think we covered it all. Perfect. Lauren has a question that says she'll only be attending classes in the second semester when we're fully um, on um, fully face to face. When do you need to be vaccinated? Um, before you come back to cl um, class in the in the winter term, you'll need to be vaccinated. October 8th, for those who of you who have joined late, is the date when um, you must be fully vaccinated in order to step on any of our campuses. Jose Roy Leon, and if I pronounce that name incorrectly, please excuse me, after the move-in day, is a parent allowed to go up to their student's room, bring additional items, bring child back from the weekend at home, et cetera? Again, um, Chris, you'll, you can answer that question, but remember that if you're not vaccinated, that you won't be allowed on our campuses after 
um, October 8th as we're looking to keep our community safe. Chris, anything you want to add there? Uh, no, you, parents will not be after moving day and, and you've gotten settled and your two helpers have left. You, you can't receive any guests at all. So that includes your parents, unfortunately. Um, but public health was extremely clear on that guidance. So um, the answer to that one is no. You know, one thing we just, we don't want an outbreak in our residence halls. And so we're doing our very best to keep those places as safe as possible. Sharon, there is hand sanitizers all over our campuses um, in every entrance and inside, outside, in the restrooms. And they're, they're stocked up. Um, you know, keeping our hands clean is an important prevent, preventative measure against the COVID vac, um, virus. Um, Thomas has a question, is the non-music students able to participate in school bands? Um, you know, I don't know the answer to that academic piece. Maybe somebody who's been here longer, PJ, Kate, anybody on know that answer? I can jump in a little bit. There are limited opportunities, uh, but you would need to contact the Faculty of Music because there is an audition process. So there are some uh, ensembles and um, and choirs that non-music students are able to audition for. Uh, but that's all facilitated by the Faculty of Music. So reach out to the music faculty, they'll let you know what's open. Uh, but also another shameless plug for student clubs, uh, if you aren't able to do it on the academic side, then uh, look for some of those opportunities that might be available from uh, the student clubs as well. Thank you. All right, Angela, will the Accessibility Office be contacting all students who have submitted an application by the week of September 6? We are still waiting to hear from them. Um, as far as I know, that, that process is happening. We've got ac academic accommodations doing that. Lindsay, um, can you speak to this one as well? Uh, I can. I know that they are very busy right now. Lots of students obviously are, are working through the registration process with our accessible learning team. If you feel that, um, you know, your application might have been lost, then connect in with them. But do know that they are, are working through those as quickly as they can to get students registered, to meet with their consultants and to get those accommodations in place. So um, they're, they're working through it, but feel free to reach out as just a quick check to maybe make sure that you haven't missed an email. Uh, we have seen that happening a little bit, but uh, Otherwise, they will be connecting with all students as soon as they're able to. Thank yeah, you. Can I add to that too, yeah. Ivan, that um, November 12th is the last day for students to register with our Accessible Learning Center for the fall term, for fall term support. And so if you haven't done so already and you know it is a requirement for you or your student, um, we suggest you get on it right away so that your support can kick in as early as possible. As Lindsay mentioned, there are a high volume of um, intakes and registrations happening. So your uh, response time from ALC at this point in the year will be at least two weeks. So um, if you've just submitted, not to fret, it will take a couple of weeks for them to get to you. Once your registration and intake process is set up, then you'll get keyed up with your one-on-one -on -one consultant. If you qualify, and then you'll have an ongoing open communication with them. Thank you very much. Um, Hafiz and Trinity, I see your questions. That, um, we've answered them earlier. I'll just ask um, one of um, our colleagues to just respond to you both each and in your two separate questions directly privately and we'll just move to these other ones. Um, Kyle, are the floors in the residence halls co-ed? Um, let's go to you, uh, Chris, on that one. Um, so in traditional dorm, so dorm double communities where there is a shared washroom, it is single sex, but all of the other floors are co-ed. Okay. And what are the hours of the uh, meal um, piece? You know, I think that one I didn't, I, you know, I miss, misspoken, Heather. I don't think we, we touch base on the hours of the meal plan. I think we open at seven for breakfast and I think they go till seven. Okay. It's definitely in there. And they'll adjust um, as in, in past years, they've adjusted if people want to come later or they don't have, um, and they don't have customers past 6.30 or whatever, they'll adjust the times to make sure that everyone's taken care of. All right. Thank you. Uh, Tammy Wickware, there was a comment about students having an opportunity for in-person class seminar this fall. None of the second year business classes offer this. Who should our student, oh, just not, who should our student contact to assist in arranging for this? So I would uh, contact um, their faculty. Again, you know, I can't comment on the academic pieces, so I'm, I'm not sure of the right direction to point you in. I just wanna make sure. Uh, Kate or Lindsay, um, would you know who the resource is 
on campus that we could direct those folks for the BBA um, program? Um, as a starting point, I would reach out to BBA Advising at WL, uh, WLU.ca. There we go. I think Kara can put that in the chat for everyone and uh, they can direct them to the right profile after that or any online resources or changes in, in schedule. All right. Thank you. Uh, my son is assigned a shared room and he's fully vaccinated. Can we confirm his roommate is also fully vaccinated? Bambi, um, we cannot ask people for their health information that is um, you know, protected under the um, Privacy Act. And so we cannot confirm. We can only say that to be on our campuses, you must be vaccinated or um, uh, fill out a form that exempts you under the protected grounds of the Human Rights Charter, okay? My son um, emailed food services last week to change his apartment meal plan to a five day only plan. He has not received an updated invoice. Um, okay, um, should we plan to wait to hear back or just pay the first term invoice and then pay the adjusted amount later? Um, Chris, can you speak to that? Um, I mean, you could do either. If it were me, I would probably pay it and they'll put a credit back on your account, which you'll just use for fees down the line. Um, if that's not something you're interested in, I would call the one card office and say, where are we on this? This time of year, I mean, they're inundated with those kind of changes and it's a process that goes on between them and finance. Uh, and sometimes those things take a week or two. Okay, thank you. Oludalpo, um, I'm hoping, to, I'm gonna try that one more time. Oludalapo, all right. So who are those who are going to be in residence? Please provide some more clarity as this is kind of confusing. Okay, um, let me see. As my daughter is coming in for her first year and we made a deposit for residence. Um, Chris, do you want to speak to that again? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what you mean. Um, residents are first year students. Um, we have a first year guarantee. So if you're a first year student who met the deadline um, of June 1st with your application, um, then you were guaranteed a room and should have received a room assignment at this point. If that criteria fits you and you haven't received a room assignment and you're not sure where you're at, your best bet is to call the office tomorrow morning, um, uh, call the residence office and um, give them your name and your information and we will get you sorted out. Thank you. Uh, Cheryl, I see your question. How does Laurier justify the fact that there has been no reduction in tuition fees throughout the pandemic? Asking on behalf of a new graduate and new student. Um, I can understand lots of students might be frustrated that there hasn't been a reduction in any university's tuitions across the sector in Canada. We know that it, the pandemic has affected different families differently and that the financial hardship has been tougher on some than others. As a university, we have increased our financial assistance, our grants, our scholarships, um, our bursary programs to help those students that might be impacted. Um, you know, I know that's not the answer that all students want to hear. And if there's a concern, um, please feel free to reach out to the deans of students office. We want to retain our students. We're still trying to deliver a first class experience. Um, it's a different experience. And I, and I know it might be challenging and not what we all hoped for, but we are trying our best. Adam, will intramurals be starting up? Absolutely. Sarah, when is the date of intramurals and what kinds of intramurals can they expect to participate? Debate. Yeah, um, intramurals are scheduled to start um, as uh, Sunday, the 25th of September. Um, registration deadlines are the week prior to that. So um, you can register either as a free agent if you don't have a group of uh, peers that you already know and you want to play with, you uh, you can register as a team or as a free agent. And we put uh, free agents together or we put free agents on teams that are just short a few players here and there. Um, we are having I'll try to rhyme off a few of them, but outdoor soccer, indoor soccer, ball hockey, um, handball, uh, basketball, volleyball, dodgeball, badminton, table tennis. I'm not sure I hit them all. For anyone who's asking specifically about ice hockey, we have decided to delay ice hockey until the winter term. So for those of you who are anxious to get back on the ice, you'll maybe have to join ball hockey for the fall and then get out the skates for the winter term. Thank you very much. Hafiz, I see your question and I can hear your frustration and your, and your anger. And, and you know what? I, I can't say enough how sorry I am. Are there any going to be any other initiatives that Laurier 201 that will make up for the class of 24 losing a quarter now coming up to three eighths of their university experience? Everybody has suffered, right? Students in their first year have suffered. There's families who've lost businesses during the pandemic. 
There are people whose mental health and well-being has impacted. And so as much as we want to say that we can regain that and make it all go away, it will never be the same. As I deal with my own family and my own son whose high school senior experience and first year experience were impacted by the pandemic, I have no other words than to say it sucks. And I'm sorry. If I could wish it could go away, I wish it could. We are trying our best. That's why we created 201 to try and give you folks a, um, a freshman orientation, a first year orientation experience. We know that people want to make friends. We know that people want to be connected. We know that they didn't have the experience they wanted to have. And so all we can do now is to hear the feedback from our students, to rally around with our student union leaders and our, and our community and say, how can we make up for this as best we can? We've pumped significant dollars into increased programming. We've increased different activities. Um, and Lindsay and PJ can speak to those in detail what those things are, but you'll never get the first year back. And so we just hope that in hopefully this pandemic weaves itself through, everybody gets vaccinated and we get back to life as normal as soon as we can. PJ and Lindsay, do you wanna to speak to some of the individual and specific events you've put on? Um. I guess I can start. Um, we are obviously trying our hardest to have as much in-person programming as possible, but there are challenges given the provincial guidelines and we are trying to work within them. We've also put, a, put, a, put out quite a few different events virtually, which have retained quite a few students in the past, this past year, um, attending them, and we are hoping to do as much as we can for future events, a week being our first priority, given that it is coming up fairly soon. Um, but we do hope to do some more programming throughout um, September and October. Um, I don't know if Lindsay wanted to add anything else from her offices, but that's all I can speak to as of right now. Thanks, PJ. I would say from a, a Laurier 201 perspective, uh, we are kicking off the weekend or kicking off the year with um, the Laurier 201 kickoff weekend and events that are going to be sort of coordinated and around the same time as orientation week, but that's just the beginning of it. So uh, we're, we're calling it second year September. We have a number of events that are, are going to be coming your way. We'll be reaching out to uh, find out what other types of events you're looking for as well. So as we progress through the year, uh, stay tuned for more events and also make sure that you're letting us know the types of opportunities that you really are looking for. So um, a couple of examples, examples sorry, would be to uh, connect with students from your program with program meet and greet specifically for second year students, right? Meet other students and your classmates uh, on campus or virtually wherever you may be studying this year. Uh, we'll be connecting with our homecoming team around some uh, specific opportunities that might be available during homecoming to, um, create, I guess, space for second year students to connect in, in some of those ways as well. And then looking for um, ways to welcome other students back in January. So if you're not coming back in September, you know, stay tuned, we'll be looking for that as well. Uh, and make sure you come and pick up your, your welcome to campus kit. So uh, if you haven't registered for it yet, here's my, my shameless plug for Laurie 201 is make sure that you do that registration because uh, we really do want to welcome you to campus and make sure that uh, you have the opportunity to meet some other students, to meet some of our staff and faculty and senior students and hear from them uh, how things are going. Thanks, Kara. She put the, the Laurier 201 information in there for you uh, and make sure that you're checking that website regularly because uh, the events as we move through the term and are able to add in more we'll be adding in more so uh, it's going to look very different on day one than it will by the time we get to the end of fall term and then certainly and hopefully I guess maybe a better way of saying it by the end of, of um, the winter term this year as well. Thank you. Um, we're, we're down to the end of our time but you know I'm going to try and get a couple more in. Um, if you don't mind panel sticking in, uh, sticking around a little bit longer. Um, oh, and I see a type of question here is what type of food can I expect to find in the cafeteria? It's not a picky eater, but prefer to make healthy choices when eating. Um, Chris, can you um, address that? Sure. Um, I think if, if you like to eat healthy, then the, the dining hall is a great option. Um, they have a, a series of uh, food stations um, with a ton of variety of stuff, everything from vegan to vegetarian. Um, they accommodate all different kinds of eating. If you have a special dietary need, all you need to do is contact those in the dining hall, seek out one of the chefs when you get there, and they will do for you um, custom uh, food to ensure that you are fueled up and ready to go to class and get it done. 
Um, but it's a really awesome like Marche style where you can choose all kinds of different stuff. Thank you. Um, Tony, this question is for you is how safe is the Brantford campus? They've seen a lot of homeless people around downtown and how safe is that is that campus? Tony? Thanks, Ivan. Um, I, I think that, you know, I've worked in Brantford every, you know, every day for the last 11 years, and I would consider it a safe downtown core. We have a really close relationship with our special constable services, um, and they share information about the downtown core every year through their annual reports um, and their their reported numbers of crimes and uh, and interactions are actually quite low considering what you might expect um, we certainly can understand the way uh, the way that that might look driving into town you know taking a peek by some of the residence buildings and seeing some of the folks that are you know certainly struggling with with certain aspects of their lives in the downtown core but one of the things that I will say is that the university and the, the organization does a tremendous job providing supports for students to combat that perception of safety. Um, and that's something that we've been asked questions about for years uh, is, is the opportunity about questions about perceptions of safety and whatnot. And that's why we, we provide services like a safe walk and talk program for students uh, through our foot patrol program. Um, we also encourage our students to uh, to get familiar with their surroundings within the downtown core throughout the first couple of weeks of, of classes in campus. Uh, orientation week is a really great way to do that because you're always in, in hopefully larger groups of people uh, all together and outdoors. So you get a really good chance to kind of see where most of your classes will be, where you can go buy groceries and those types of things. Um, so to answer that question in kind of a bit of a roundabout way, I do think that it's, that it's a safe downtown core. And I think that the numbers are there to kind of back it up and prove it. Um, you know, there's always going to be specific reporting on crimes across the province. But I think if you look at some of the, the campus specific incidents, especially in the last five to six years, those numbers are relatively low considering um, how much activity happens within the downtown core. I think a lot of really positive changes within the downtown core have made that that cityscape a little bit more, you know, inviting and open. Uh, the opening of the Laurie Brantford YMCA, the usage of Harmony Square, the Sanderson Center puts on some really great programming throughout uh, the school year and the summer term. So there's always a lot of activity going on within the school year, um, within the downtown core. And for the most part, it's populated with students, which is a really great thing to see. Thanks. Kara, can you respond to Abigail Chalmers' question in the chat about one card keys, where to go and pick them up um, there? And Lauren, I see your question is, can a first year um, student attend 201? I, I mean, there's programming for you. 201 is a replica of the 101 program. So you know, that's would be my recommendation. And, you know, Hafiz, I, I thank you for the warm comment, um, uh, the kind comment about um, us answering your questions. And Jane, I see you there as well, thanking us for, um, for hosting this. Uh, you know, we tried not to be, um, to avoid any questions. There were some tough ones. We know that we are going to take one step forward, one step sideways, two steps forward, maybe one step backwards. Give us your feedback. Uh, at the end of the day, we're here for the service of students. We want this pandemic to be over. We want to get life back to normal as soon as we can. So we appreciate you jumping on this call. We appreciate you asking us the questions. The library, the bookstore, the entire campus is open for everybody. Once you're vaccinated, come find us, seek us out by name, give us your feedback, not just the things we're doing wrong, because sometimes we like to hear things we're doing really well, so we know to keep doing them. And most importantly, welcome to the time of your lives. Pandemic or no pandemic, you're starting a new adventure. Embrace it. We look forward to having you here at Wilfrid Laurier University across our many campuses. And we can't wait to say to you, stay golden. All the best, folks.